Good morning. Welcome to St. George's 
either in person on this very cold January morning or watching via Facebook Live. I started the service a couple minutes early, so those of you at home might be able to join listening to the beautiful music of our prelude. Please appreciate that. If you're in person, it's such a pleasure to hear our organ playing again. This morning is the second Sunday after Epiphany, January 16th, 2022. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Let us confess our sins to God, all joining together. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. All join together, Lord, open our lips, and our yeah. mouths shall proclaim your praise. Could we all join together and say the Venite found on page 82 in the Book of Common Prayer or in your lesson? Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to hear his voice. The psalm is Psalm 36, verses 5 through 10. I will say the first verse and ask all to join in on alternating verses. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains. Your justice is like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You gave them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life. And in your light, we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your favor to those who are true of heart. All glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and will be forever. Amen. All well, please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Old Testament from the book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verses 1 through 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. Until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. 
You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All join together in reading the song of Sinemian. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For the eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Reading from the New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing, by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allows to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. The word of the Lord.
Please all rise for the Gospel reading. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was given out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there, there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water, that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called his bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord Christ. Please all be seated. For today's reflection, I chose some of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s words. Yesterday, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would have turned 93 years old. In honor of the day of Dr. King's birth on January 15, 1929, I would like to share his words which remain as relevant and inspiring today as they were when he lived and shared them with us. So many of his quotes move me. Some that really resonate within me are as follows. We must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Forgiveness is not an occasional act. It is a permanent attitude. Our lives begin to end 
the day we become silent about things that matter. We may have all come on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be a sun, be a star. For it isn't by size that you win or fail. Be the best of whatever you are. Out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope. Man must evolve for all human conflict, a method which rejects revenge, aggression, and retaliation. The foundation of such a measure is love. We must develop and maintain the capacity to forgive. He who is devoid of the power to forgive is devoid of the power to love. There is some good in the worst of us and some evil in the best of us. When we discover this, we are less prone to hate our enemies. Nonviolence is absolute commitment to the way of love. Love is not emotional bash. It is not empty sentimentalism. It is the active outpouring of one's whole being into the being of another. If one loves an individual merely on account of his friendliness, he loves him for the sake of the benefits to be gained from that friendship rather than for the friend's own sake. Consequently, the best way to assure oneself that love is disinterested is to have love for the enemy neighbor from whom you can expect no good in return, but only hostility and persecution. That's love, you see. It is redemptive, and this is why Jesus says love. There's something about love that builds up and is creative. There is something about hate that tears down and is destructive. So love your enemies. You know, a lot of people don't love themselves. And they go through life with deep and haunting emotional conflicts. So the length of life means that you must love yourself and you know what loving yourself also means. It means that you've got to accept yourself. Even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. There are so many more of his sayings I could have reflected on, but these are the ones when I was reading through that really stood out to me and resonated with me. Tomorrow is the day we celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s life and all he stood for. I persevere to be more like him in my thoughts, words, in actions. In ending my reflections for today, I chose to read Dr. King's speech he delivered at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. on August 28, 1963. May we all strive to be like Dr. King today and every day. This is transcript of Dr. King's speech. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This monumentous decree came as a great beckoning light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been 
seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro is still not free. 100 years later, the life of a Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the change of discrimination. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later, the Negro is still languishing in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. We have all come to this hollowed spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to change racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time to make justice ring out for all God's children. There will be neither rest nor tranquility in America until the Negro is granted citizenship rights. We must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protest to degenerate into physical violence. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. And the marvelous new militim which has engulfed the Negro community must not lead us to distrust of all white people. For many of our white brothers have evidenced by their presence here today that they have come to realize that their destiny is part of our destiny. So even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is deep, dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the Red Hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day, down in Alabama with its vicious racists, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, one day, right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places, plains, and the crooked places will be made straight. And before the Lord will be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the mount with. With this faith, we will all be able to hew out of the mountains of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the genuine discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom forever, knowing that we will be free one day. And I say to you today, my friends, let freedom ring. From the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire, let freedom ring. From the mighty mountains of New York, let freedom ring. From the mighty Alleghenies of Pennsylvania, 
Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only there, let freedom ring from the stone mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain in Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and molehill in Mississippi. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And when this happens, when we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every village and hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, Thank God Almighty, we're free at last. That was Dr. King's famous speech. In reading, in tomorrow being the day we honor his memory, let us all look at others and realize with our strengths and weaknesses we're all the same. Let us appreciate each other. Let's treat all other people as humans as they deserve. Thank you. Could we all stand as able and join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please all be seated for announcements. Uh, good morning again. Uh, now I have my warden's hat on. Um, this week, we, as always, remind the collection offering box is in the Norfolk. Um, you can either leave your contribution there, you can email it, you can mail it to the church. The mail is checked on a very regular daily basis. Um, remember St. George's in your monetary and time contributions, as always. Um, food pantry, uh, as usual, will be held Wednesday from 10 to 11. On Thursday evening, there was a stewardship meeting at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Even though stewardship focuses in the fall, it's a year-round process. So if anybody's curious about it, would like to join, please let us know. Please let Mary Ellen know myself. We will absolutely send you a link to see what we're all about there. Next Sunday, January 23rd, is our annual meeting. And for the second year, we'll be doing it via Zoom so we can all be together while apart. We review a bit about the life of the church in the past year and elect new vestry members. If anyone is interested in serving on the vestry or in becoming a warden, please let Paul Brophy know or contact the church office. Um, please read your um, e-blast that is emailed to you. And if by chance you don't get one or you would like a hard copy mail, call the church office and let them know. We will make sure that occurs. There are still 
face masks available with St. George's logo and the bell tower on them. They are $15 each and they are in the church office. You can see Andrea Chester, myself, or any one of us and we'll make sure you have them. And um, there is a winter talk on January 15th and 16th on Saturday and Sunday, which actually would have been yesterday, about the general convention. Um, and thank you as always for being here and being part of us, whether you're remote or in person. May you all stay warm in this cold weather and may you all be safe in the coming possible snow. Thank you. Could all stand as able for the prayer which are found on page 97 in the Book and Common Prayer, or also in your lesson. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Could we all join together in the Lord's Prayer, found in the lesson leaflet, or on page 97? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We will follow with suffrages B found in page 98 of the Book of Common Prayer or in the lesson leaflet. I will read the first verse and ask that those present or at home read the response that's printed in bold. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. The Collect for Today. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illuminated by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The prayers of the people, please have your response, which is the bold response. As we prepare the way of the Lord, let us offer prayers to God, who will lead us with joy in the light of God's glory. For the peace of the world and for our unity in Christ, come, O Lord, Lord, and save us. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Andrew, Alan, and Mary, our bishops, for Mary, our priest, for Leslie, our presider, and all who minister in Christ, and for all the holy people of God, come, O oh Lord, and save us. For the church throughout the world and the faithful in every place, come, O oh Lord, and save us. For the leaders of the nations and all in authority, come, O oh Lord, and save us for justice, peace, and freedom among peoples of the earth. Come, O Lord, and save us. For travelers, for the sick, and for the suffering, especially all who we now name either silently or aloud. And for the hungry and the oppressed, and for those in prison, come, O Lord, and save us. For the blessings of this life, we give you thanks. For the celebrations of those we hold close, 
especially those we now name aloud or in our hearts. Come, O Lord, and save us. For the dying and the dead, we remember all those at rest in St. George's Cemetery and Calabarium, and those we now name aloud or in our hearts. Come, O Lord, and save us. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need. Come, O Lord, and save us. Joining our voices with the Blessed Virgin Mary, John the Baptist, St. George, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. O Lord. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Can we all join together in saying the prayer of St. Christosimum found in the lesson leaflet or on page 102 in the Book of Common Prayer? Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Could we all join together in St. George's Prayer of Mission? Grant, we beseech thee, Heavenly Creator, that as we go forth, that we live our mission statement to find and serve Christ in all people, to love our neighbors as ourselves, and to respect the dignity of every human being so that we may know Christ and make Christ known in the world. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.